Hello, my name is Fox and you're watching Den of Fools. Let's jump right in. The Palm Springs Open took place at Palm Springs, USA from the 22nd to the 23rd of July, 2023. The tournament had six rounds with 111 players and 627 games played. Joel Wilson won the tournament with their Tyranids, Alex Sapapoulos and their Aldari came second, with Jake Denonowski running Necrons in third. Big congratulations to all these players and big apologies for the poor pronunciation of their names. The winning Tyranids list takes a Neuro Tyrant as the Warlord. He brings the ability which makes enemies test Battleshock at minus one when you use Shadow in the wall. In my opinion, it significantly improves the once per game mass Battleshock, giving a decent chance for a fair few units to fail. They will be leading the big 22 strong squad of Neuro Gaunts, giving the Neuro Tyrant a load of extra wounds. There is an on-foot high Tyrant. They have a heavy Venom Cannon with the Bone Sword and Lash. They can allow a unit to use a stratagem for free within 12 inches. Every faction has access to a similar ability, such as the Space Marine Captain. I am pretty sure every list we have looked at in 10th has taken the unit with the ability for their respective faction. This one is slightly more useful, as you don't have to use it on the unit you are leading. They also give units within 6 inches assault for their weapons, pretty useful for the 100 Termagants with Devourers. Finally for characters we have the Death Leaper, who is getting a very cool new model. They are a lone operative with Infiltrator's Stealth and Fights First. They are a character assassin with 6 attacks, hitting on 2s at strength 7, AP-2 and 2 damage. They will be quite good against lightly armoured characters, and they give you a CP if they kill one. They also worsen leadership by 1 for enemies within 6 inches, and they must test Battleshock if they are below starting strength, rather than half strength, a useful ability when it comes up. Alongside the aforementioned 100 Termagants, we see a single squad of 20 Hormagorns. The Termagants can make a d6 inch move when an enemy ends a move within 9 inches of them. The Hormagorns on the other hand, can advance and charge with a 10 inch movement for a good threat range. I'm sure the 1 CP Endless Swarm stratagem to restore d3 plus 3 to 2 of these units was used quite frequently. We have 2 Biovores with the Spore Mine launchers to launch those pesky Spore Mines within 48 inch of them and not within 9 inch of enemy models. These units are all to include, as the Spore Mines they can fire across the board are very useful for scoring secondary objectives. The mines also prevent enemy models from starting or ending in advance within 6 inches of them. Very useful for slowing down armies trying to get on objectives. These units have also escaped the FAQ, so will continue to work this way at least till the Tyranids Codex is released, which we know will be the first Codex of 10. We see a single Lictor, who is basically a slightly less dangerous Death Leaper, which makes sense as it is the character Lictor. I would imagine, imagine they were chilling out with the Death Leaper, although, once per battle it can use the Rapid Ingress stratagem for 0 CP, quite useful considering they have the Lone Operative so you can guarantee they won't be shot. We see some psychic bugs starting with two Maliceptors. They are rather durable with toughness 11, 14 wounds, a 3 plus save and a 4 plus invul. They make enemy units within 6 inches of them minus 1 to hit, and minus 1 to wound as well if below half strength. The psychic overload is quite potent. At 18 inches it makes d6 plus 3 attacks with blast, hitting on 3s at strength 10, AP minus 2, and flat 3 damage. They also have a strike and sweep profile in melee, meaning they can chew through elite infantry or do damage to armour. There is a squad of zone tropes. They give units within 6 inches of them a 6 plus symbol, useful for the big swarm of gaunts. The neurothrope inflict d3 mortal wounds to enemy units within 6 inches when they fail battle shock, and one model regains d3 wounds as well. Their psychic attacks have two profiles, one for armour and one for elite infantry. Finally, we have two squads of venom free venom tropes. They give friendly nids within 6 inches the benefit of cover and stealth to the non-monster nids. They make 5 attacks with their lashes, hitting on freeze with anti-infantry 2 plus and 1 damage. They will make short work of light infantry. It is good to see a list other than the really strong factions win. I do think they are reliant on those spore mines to do well at the moment, but of course this could all change when their codex releases. Talking about really strong factions, we of course have an Aldari list in second. We see the familiar units which are featured in every competitive Aldari list at the moment but this list does take a few units we haven't seen before. This list takes the Autarch on Farseer as usual, with the common Death Jester with the Fate's Messenger Enhancement. Similar to the third place Aldari list at the Show Me Showdown, we see Illic Nightspear and the Lone Operative Rangers for him to lead. We see the very common choices with three Fire Prisms, three Warp Spiders, three War Walkers, a single squad of Shadow Spectres, and a support weapon with a D-Cannon. This list mixes it up a little bit, taking two Void Weavers with the Prismatic Cannons. They can shoot with 2 shots at strength 12, AP-3 and damage 4, or a 2d6 blast profile at strength 4 and 1 damage. We haven't seen the Vipers before, which are another Bright Lights platform. 
they can also remove cover for one unit that they hit each shooting phase. Finally, we see a squad of swooping hawks. They are highly mobile at a move of 14 inches. They have deep strike, and if that wasn't enough, they can go back into strategic reserve at the end of your opponent's turn. They bring a lot of anti-infantry shooting with their lethal hits, assault, las blasters. Each one shoots four times, hitting on threes at strength four and one damage. I would imagine they were mainly used for their mobility. They will be very useful for getting into far-flung objectives, or maybe a cult ambush marker or two. The third place Necrons list resembles the ones we have seen in the top three before. As a Necrons player, it's good to see they can do well in tournaments. We don't see a Hexmark Destroyer in this list, instead we have the Nightbringer. He hits on twos with all of his attacks, and has a good defensive profile with toughness 11, 12 wounds, a 4-up invul, and like all Katarn shards, he halves all incoming damage. His Gaze of Death is an 18-inch range blast attack, with D3 attack, has strength 12, AP minus 2, and damage D6 plus 3. He is suitably deadly in melee, either hitting with 6 attacks at strength 14, AP minus 4 and damage D6 with devastating wounds, or 14 attacks at strength 8, AP minus 2 and 2 damage. I don't think anything would like to tangle with him in combat. Finally, at the end of the fight phase, you can choose one enemy unit within 6 inches of them to take D3 mortal wounds on a 4+. plus. We see the auto include Overlord with Orban Ablator, who will be leading the 10-man squad of Lich Guard with the shields. I would imagine the Technomancer with the Veil of Darkness will also join them, to give them a 5 plus feel no pain, and the ability to teleport across the board once per battle. To add further durability to this squad, I'm sure they were also joined by some Crypto Thralls, so they can tank mortal wounds with their 4 plus fear no pain. GW confirmed in the FAQ that Crypto Thralls do not give the whole squad fights on death. It seemed pretty obvious to me they weren't supposed to do that, but it's nice to have the clarification. For the first time we see a Plasmancer, it gives critical hits on 5s to the squad they are leading. They can also dish out some mortals in the shooting phase. You select one enemy unit within 18 inches and roll a d6 for every model in that unit. For every 6, they take a mortal wound. This is really great against hordes, and I would imagine they led the bigger mortal squad with the Teslas to double down on anti infantry firepower. The Teslas have sustained hits too, and make 2 attacks hitting on freeze with strength 5 and 1 damage. With the Plasmancer, every 5 will get 2 additional hits. They are also assault to give the immortal some much needed additional speed. This combines very well with their special rule to reroll once the wound and full wound rerolls against units on objectives. This all adds up to some very potent anti infantry firepower. I have just finished building 10 immortals. I think I will have to build the Plasmancer, who's been sitting in my Indomitus box for the whole of night. It's nice to finally have a reason to use them. We see the very common Transcendent Katarn with the Weave for the 4 plus feel no pain. We see the Katarn in nearly every competitive Necron list and has escaped any changes in the FAQ to prevent it taking the weave. In fact, they have buffed the unit by giving it the reanimation keyword, which it was missing. It should have been included in the first place, but the auto-include Katarn will be even more durable than it already is. We see the auto-include single reanimator with this list taking two small squads of scarabs. There are two squads of five flayed ones to infiltrate into the midfield, with a repeat of the popular Locust Heavy Destroyer with Destructor, although this list only takes one, and instead asks for two Doomsday Arcs for the anti-tank firepower. Their Doomsday Cannons have heavy, blast, and devastating wounds when the arc remains stationary. They make D6 plus 1 attacks, hitting on freeze at strength 15, AP minus 4, and flat 4 damage. If you are shooting at a big 20-man squad, you could use the stratagem to reroll wounds on a single target within half range of its 72-inch main cannon. This would allow you to fish for 6s, with the wound reroll to dish out some serious mortals with the D6 plus 5 shots. Finally, there is one unit of Death Marks, with their strength 5, AP minus 2, flat 2 damage snipers. Once per turn, they can shoot at an enemy which deep drives within 18 inches of them to pick off a few troops or perhaps a character if they are lucky. Unsurprisingly, the Space Marines are the most played faction with 20.72% of all players taking them. Aldaria in second with 9.91%, followed by Imperial Knights in third on 8.11%. It takes our resident stats guru and Ultramarine fanboy Fearless Fox many hours to collect all the data. It would be great if you could show your appreciation by liking and sharing the video. It really helps us with the god algorithm of YouTube. We have grouped the win rates by colour, with the key at the bottom of the screen. The 3000 Suns players topped the win rate with a win rate of 66.7%. Two of these players got into the top 20. The tournament runner-up and second most popular faction Aldari come next, with a win rate of 63.9%. The tournament winners Tyranids get a win rate of 61%, a very impressive tournament for the Nids. Somewhat surprisingly, Admech are the last faction in blue, with a win rate of 60%. One of the Admet players went 5-1 and one and came 11th in the tournament overall, a very impressive result for a struggling faction. They took a lot of characters, including Belisarius Call himself. They took 3 max squads of Iron Striders, 2 max squads of Breachers, 
with units of Cerberus Hounds and Paraxy Skystalkers also being played more than once. Gene Stealer Cults topped the green group with a win rate of 57.6%, with the third most popular faction Imperial Knights just behind on 57.4%. Chaos Demons get a win rate of 56.7%, followed by Orcs on a win rate of 51.9%. The World Eaters are the last faction in green with a 50% win rate. The tournament third place finisher Necrons get a win rate of 43.3%, followed by the most popular faction Space Marines on 42%. All of the Chaos Space Marine players are unknown, so we will look at the Loyalists. The third most popular chapter, the Blood Angels topped the win rate with 58.3%. One of their two players finished ninth in the tournament. I did take a quick look at the list, and they used the Gladius Strike Force rather than the Blood Angels Detachment. They did take Corbulo and Lamartes, with a big squad of 10 Death Company with Power Fist for him to lead. All the other units were Index Space Marines, such as Gladiator Lancers and Desolation Marines. They also took a Land Raider Redeemer, and some Assault Squads and Vanguards. The most popular chapter, Black Templars, get a win rate of 54.2%, followed by the Raven Guard on a 50% win rate. The joint second most popular chapter, the Dark Angels, get a win rate of 41.2%, with the other second most popular chapter, the Ultramarines, winning a quarter of their games. If you enjoyed our content, please subscribe, check out one of the videos on screen, and consider using our affiliate links in the description. Thank you for watching.